right. Uh, uh, well, good evening to you, my fellow viewer human being. This is the Wake Up Show, and uh, by the looks of it, I guess you're awake. Uh, this is this is a very very uh, special time we're in. I've heard from my yoga teacher who says that because the moon is like full and this affects us humans in very many different ways. So it's important to pay respects to the moon and his son, the sun. They're not even related. I am just speaking nonsense. Don't worry about it. What my point was is it's another Thursday and it's another episode of The Waker Show. This is episode 11 of the second season. Uh, and we have a great show for you guys this fine evening. We have wonderful guests that came here all the way to the dream. You know, it's not always easy to sort of get in. You know, I don't know, you, have, you know you have your favorite dream and then you wake up and say, please let me go back into that dream. And this is, this is that type of experience, you know, the wake-up show. It's that type of experience that that's the dream you want to dream wake up into. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yes. Um, I was going to say something else. Something about... Yes. Yes. This is also the, the beginning of the end. It is uh, the beginning of me having a seven day silent fast where I will not speak and not eat for seven days until the next episode of The Waker Shop. And this grand experience will start... Well, the fasting bit started at seven o'clock. We'll talk about that later in the show. And the silence thing will start the moment this show ends and will not begin again until next episode or seven days into the future. To boldly go where no one's ever bothered going before. Because that's the type of guy I am. I am curious. Um, yeah, I think, like I said, this is, this is like one of those Thursdays where you, what you want to be doing is watching the wake-up show, which clearly you are, so Without further ado, just run the intro, man. Let's let's get this this party started, right? Live from the dream, aka Drummond, it's the Wake Up Show with your host, Wolf Thunder Flitty. Yes. Now, you know, I'm, I, I'm doing this for you, the entirety of humanity, waking you all up. It's, it's, uh, well, it's, it's, it's a mouthful, even when you're fasting. And to be able to do this, I've set up this thing. God damn it, that's small. From the like juice called patreon.com slash the wake up show, where you can support the show and become a patron. And you give like a monthly donation and make this dream a reality, which it already is because you know you're watching it. So what the hell? Uh, so uh, also what you get, other than the satisfaction of actually uh, aiding my quests, uh, of going to the sand of the France, of the Cisco's, uh, because that's, that's my goal, my mission statement and all of that. Um, you get to watch the ULF Experience, which is a documentary series about my journey from the basement of the dream and out into the global phenomena that is the Wake Up Show and has always been. So that's, uh, that's Patreon. Whew! That was a lot, that was a lot of, that was a lot of stuff. Now, we got a bit like sidetracked before we started, so this is, I haven't gotten like, I haven't sort of written a proper sort of schedule for the evening but we did the intro and we'll do the blah 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 and then we're gonna have uh, and then we're gonna have uh, 
she's just okay. Is this dead air? Is is this what dead air feels like? This is this is silence is golden, like to say. And then we'll do the second and then Okay, I'm just sorting, trying to get a lay of the lands. And I truly, I really apologize for this inconvenience, but you know that's the, that's the upside with live. You get to see like the, 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 the structure behind the thing, how it works. Just, it's pretty great, right? Um, okay, now, now, now I think it's, I, I think I've gotten sort of like a lay of the land, Mats. I'll just sort of cue you in because you're uh, an agile and, uh, and uh, phenomenal human being. Thank you for being here, by the way. I love you. And uh, um, speaking of lovely people, our first guest uh, now, um, he is a um, famous Norwegian rapper uh, whom uh, I, I'm not quite sure we're, we've ever like met properly, even though I never was a rapper, but made music videos for rappers. But let's, let's just bring him into the studio because it's so much easier to talk with him than about him. Cost, come on into the studio, man. Airhorn? You, you want the air horn? You want the hug, man? Yeah. Come on, Tyler. Yeah. Grab a chair. Thank have you. a seat. Thank you. Welcome to the Wake Up Show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, you, yeah, um, so people know who you are, you can hold this up because we're keeping it it's very small. I'm, I'll do it like this. Like, cast Sobon, the fast rapper. But I write fast rapper because uh, the reason you came to the show, which oh. is a delight, is because someone, because I was like, who knows about fasting? And then someone said, we should talk to Cast because he knows a little thing or two about fasting. I know a thing or two, yeah. You know a thing or two? I know a thing or two. Three? Maybe three, yeah. God damn it. And you are a rapper, so then you became the fast rapper. Don't worry, you don't have to rap fast to be a fast I'm rapper. I'm good, I'm very tired, so that's good. <laughs> it's been a long day, but I'm here. You're here? I'm here. You have, uh, and now, you were like, uh, um, I thought you were really scary back in 2005. Yeah, I was a little bit aggressive. Uh, I was calming down in 2005. <laughs> that was the calm. I was calming down from uh, being a pretty wild teen in uh, early 20s. Yes. You know? I was 25 in 2005. Yeah, 2005, right? Yeah, That's yeah. What you said, yeah. Because you were, you were, you are in uh, in uh, a rap group. Uh, yeah, that rap group doesn't exist anymore. But. Um, now I'm just a solo artist. We that group kind of broke up back in 2013. So it's a couple of years ago. Yeah, it's a group called Eki Says. Yes. And we rapped in English, Norwegian, and Spanish. So it's kind of a mix. Yes, you're multilingual. Yeah, not me. I just rapped in Norwegian and a little bit English, but mostly Norwegian because yeah, I'm most most mostly comfortable with that. Are you comfortable with the English language as a guest on my show? Yeah, sure. You know, my my mom is a a Maro Liberian. So we spoke English growing up. Okay, cool, home, so, cool, yeah. cool. Um, that's that's uh, that's pretty great. And and obviously, like I said in the in the beginning of the show, this marks the beginning of my seven day fast. And when we spoke together, you said you had just initiated your was it thirty? Or you were planning on doing a 30-day yeah, fast? Yeah, I was planning on doing a 30-day fast, but I wasn't mentally ready. Uh, I kind of have to prepare myself a few a few weeks ahead in my head Yeah. to uh, pretty much, you know, yeah, you have to prepare yourself mentally to, to start that journey, you know, because it, it is one of the toughest things you can do in the world because you're giving up... Uh, the most important thing, food, you know. Yes, this and, uh, uh, this body of ours seems to be fairly um, 
addicted to it or, or not, yeah that's a horrible word uh, but it, it needs depends, food depend, to depend sort of on function, it. Right? yeah we're dependent on food uh, yeah, to dependent function better work yeah, I like dependent, you know yeah. uh, but uh, we can also we can also uh, live without food for longer periods so, yes. and it's I think it's very much needed uh, now and then uh, for your body and for your mind yes. and spirit for you know Yes, I've been uh, uh, meddling with fasting myself yeah. uh, a couple of times um, and uh, I totally agree with you with this this connecting more to, to spirit by becoming more present. Absolutely. Because I realize, and I don't know if you feel the same way, but food very often is just a distraction. Mm. Like we just use, you just use food to sort of numb out Something. People eat when they're bored. Not even, you're not even hungry. Yeah. You know, you just, oh, I'm just going to go grab something to eat. You know, we just put garbage in ourselves. Yeah. You know, the stuff that kills us, basically. Yes. You and know. it's the thing that's going to keep us alive. Yeah. But there's so much processed food here, and, uh, you know, it's so, so easy just to throw a. People may, might not know what a grandiosa is. Yeah, the frozen pizza, <laughs> the national dish of Norway. Yeah, it's yeah. very easy to throw that in the oven and just, you know, instead of taking time to, you know, prepare a meal, prepare a good meal with a lot yes. of veggies and fruits and nuts and herbs and stuff like that. You know, you I've know. been to the grandiosa factory once. How was that? Working on the TV show, and you know, what was most upsetting about going to the to the frozen pizza factory is the fact that frozen pizza is not made with love. <laughs> it's just, you know, a machine. No. So, <laughs> well, this is obvious. It's very obvious, but when you came in there yeah. and you're like, this is where they make the most eaten frozen meal in Norway. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's just machines churning out uh, something that is food, but there is no. You know, you know when your mother makes you a delicious yeah, there's not meal. Yeah, there's, there's not an old lady there there's no making the pizza dough, you know. Yeah. Uh, and. And it was so far away from food that I felt like going to a car manufacturing factory would feel more like preparing something I could, could eat. Yeah. But it was strange because it was dead. Like, and, and I think it speaks to what you're saying. Like, is this what we should be putting in our bodies? Yeah. No, it's not. It's killing us. It's killing yeah. our bodies and spirits. And but those ads for the grandiose are very convincing because, you know, they shape the pizza into heart and like yeah, it's, it's that, the fabric that, of love. When you, if, if you really, if you really, <laughs> if you go on a fast, a longer fast and you, like when I come off a long fast, of course, I'm not going to go directly to processed or heavy food because that then you will damage yourself. Yeah. Uh, but if you eat a grandiosa after fasting for a longer period, I can tell you, I don't think you're going to buy another one. Because then your taste buds are uh, pretty much brand new. And you can taste how shitty it is and how l bad quality yeah. it really is, you know. I don't think, I didn't have a grandiosa, but I ate, what did I eat? I had been fasting for a while. Yeah. And then uh, um, I ate something which was like very processed food and i became like sick sick yeah of course uh and it was so interesting i think once you remove food and then when you actually eat food you'll notice what it actually does to your body uh, whereas when you eat all the time you sort of can't tell uh, freshly organic tomatoes from uh, some gmo yeah yeah uh, so, you, so you sort of need that gap yeah. which fasting creates i agree um now I will, I, I've typically go out into the dream mm. to ask people about things relevant to sort of like what we're talking about here. So today I go, uh, um, I went into the dream to ask my fellow dreamers about about uh, uh, about fasting. Uh, Mats, would you would you run this clip? Uh, um, yeah, yeah. He, he'll run the clip eventually. Hi, excuse me, I'm from The Wake Up Show, and I was wondering, can I ask you a couple of questions? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is the longest time you've gone without eating any food? I would think maybe like around a day, around 24 hours, when I've been sick, but never on purpose. 
You've never wanted to go for any longer? No. Why? Um, I like food and I think eating is uh, healthy. Of course, what you choose to eat is... <laughs> for how long do you think you could potentially go without food, if you had to? Ah, oh, difficult question. Um... I don't know. Is it just food or? You can like, have water, but you I cannot have, have any, um, any like solid foods. Probably only maybe a couple of days. Yeah, maybe. Three, four. Yeah, three. Okay. Three. How about seven? Would you be able to go seven? No. What would happen if you went for seven days without I food? I think I would become. Uh, angry and then I think I will become very very tired I don't think I would be able to do my job or um, be a mother <laughs> I don't think I would function how about 30 days no <laughs> it's more than seven so no <laughs> <laughs> and yes you are a bit crazy <laughs> <laughs> what was that all about? So that was, I have to confess today, um, that was my beautiful wife, Annette. Um, it was a busy day and I just didn't manage to get out of the house and ask people on the street. So yeah. I, I asked my wife, and uh, uh, do you get grumpy? Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that too. <laughs> yeah. I get grumpy, uh, but it doesn't start until maybe, uh, let's say day eight to ten oh. that's when i start getting a little bit grumpy yeah what's the longest you've gone 40 days 40 days and i've done that three times the last time i did it was like was it august i did 38 days and the last two days i couldn't handle it oh my yeah God. and then just water or did you just do water just, just what strictly water strictly yeah. water yeah wow Wow, I've also done 40 days. Yeah, three times. But I've done 40 days. Yeah. But... Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, sorry. My beautiful wife said, uh, it's reckless of you not to put anything into your body while you're fasting. So I drank some smoothies. I had some... Okay. Uh, so yeah. it was like a semi-fast. And also I broke the fast properly on day 20. Yeah. Because my dad came and I, and, and, uh, um, I just couldn't take the... Um, uh, his uh, finger. Yes, the, the moral finger of, you know. So, so, yeah, you know, you know. It's that generation. They don't know. They, they never did stuff like that. No. You know, very few of them. Maybe some of the hippies. I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. But yeah. a very, a very select few. Yeah. Um, so I think it's 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 interesting uh, because it's sort of starting to to, to to become a thing, or it's started to become more. Uh, out into the open like people are actually looking into what not eating for periods of time uh, I told my doctor when I went to him that I'm doing it because I have a back problem oh yeah and uh, I have uh, sciatica you know what that is no in Norwegian is ischias oh yeah I still don't know what it is but I've heard prolaps it's that when sort of like the um, yeah discs it's the L in your L L4 region down here when it kind of slides out oh yeah but uh, I will say that um, after 40 days of fasting, it healed my sciatica. Damn. And this is something that chiropractors and physiotherapists were not able to do. No. And uh, my physiotherapist, he said that he's never seen anything like it. Because I was not supposed, because it wasn't that long. I've been going for treatment for a long time uh, with him. And then all of a sudden I didn't show up. And he's like, hey, are you not coming to your appointment and I'm like no I'm, I'm good you know I fasted 40 days finished I didn't have pain for two years and then the pain started coming back a little bit before summer and then I fasted again gone wow so for me this is uh it's the most uh, probably the most powerful way of healing there is to me personally yeah I, it, it has healed me from uh, Many things, and it's kind of, kind of, I kind of feel like reborn when I complete the forty days. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. It is. Plus, I, I, um, 
I also make sure that I uh, stay in contact with, uh, you know, God, universe, whatever you like to call it, <laughs> while I'm doing it to give me, you know, strength to pull through the whole thing. Because it, yeah. is, it is challenging and there are, you know, a lot of temptations all around. Yes, this place is literally filled to the brim with food, and like wherever you look and walk. And but I also get this kind of feeling of become of kind of like watching the world from the outside in. Yeah. Because I kind of like walk around and observe people, like what they do. I I'll stand there and walk past Burger King. And then I see people yeah. sitting there stuffing their faces with these burgers and fries. And like, I ate fries just now, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, And you, you, you kind of like, you, you distance yourself from all of this. Like you, you sacrifice all these uh, luxuries that would they think they have. And, uh, you know, I, I, I always give this example when I go down to um, Oslo S, which is the train station in Oslo. And in the underground there, there is a um, pharmacy, and right next to the pharmacy is 7-Eleven. Across from there yeah. is Burger King. Across from there again, you have the Vinmonopole, the liquor store. Yeah, the liquor store. And like all these places are places that take you to the pharmacy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, I kind of like have this... Um, Revelation when I was a fasting when I saw this I'm like, but this is all This is all designed. Yeah, keeping you stuck to, there. to keep you sick. Yeah. basically, you know, here's your alcohol. Here's your sugar. Here's your Dirty murder burger murder king, you know so um, <laughs> well, That's a good picture of it all. Yeah, yeah. that's how I pretty much uh, look at it So uh, but I'm not saying I'm like I usually I live like a plant-based life uh, I think say 80 per like right now 80 percent raw vegan oh. so i cook like 20 percent of my food rest i eat raw so uh, and i'm planning to go on another 40 day very soon yes when uh, you feel when i'm ready when yeah ready. yeah i have to get mentally ready it, yeah it just like i knew that i was going to do this seven day fast yeah during the summer i was like i i'm going to do this this fast and then i was like when can i do it i have three kids yeah and uh, and and it's like how how do I fit this into to this thing we call modern life? Uh, and then I was like I said to my wife and I was uh, I think I'll do it this week. Mm. And then I was like mentally prepared to do it in that time frame. Yeah. And I used my show to sort of set the boundaries. And I had an experience where I felt like seven days. There was something magical about seven yeah. and the fasting. And then I had this thought: What happens if I shut up? and do as little as possible because when I've been fasting earlier I've been doing like lots of stuff socializing yeah. like living my life more or less because you get energy also yes you do yeah. and so now I want to look more inwards so I want to do a silent fast mm. which brings me to the second chair next to you because we have a second guest maybe he's fallen asleep back there Dude. oh poor, poor, poor guy uh, into the studio, Fred Astaire, will you join us, grab a chair and a microphone and, and have, a, have a seat. The microphone is over there. Yeah? Here you are, Michael. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, that was interesting. I would love to see the face of that doctor yeah. when you said that. Mm. Yeah. The, uh, my ishas is gone mm -hmm. and because I fasted for 40 days. Yeah, he, he doesn't want me to, probably doesn't want me to tell people because he'll lose all his customers, you know. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. And uh, I actually met like a, a doctor student that I told this and she told me she cannot believe it oh. because that is not what she's taught. Yeah, so it doesn't fit with yeah. her uh, uh, sort of the uh, construct of the world. Yeah, with her programming. So, yeah. yeah. Going off the grid, off the program. Mm -hmm. Fred. Welcome to the show. Thank you for the show. Yeah, it's and not for over. me being here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. In prior to that. Freddie Fairhair. Yeah. You're a YouTube phenomenon, I recall. Undressing yourself in front of uh, anyone. Why? Oh, yeah. 
No, we're not going back no, there. Okay, okay. Yeah. You've told this story we, a million yeah, times. Yeah, we have done that. No. Uh, what you're yeah. here for is, uh, uh, because you're an amazing human being, of course, and it's about time you came on the show, and because I said before I invited you in here right now that this is a silent fast and... Correct me if I'm wrong, weren't you on a silent meditation retreat this summer? If I'm wrong, god damn it. If I'm right, yes. Well, you were almost right because it it was uh in yeah, it was actually the summer, but I would say in the very end of it. Oh, the late summer. Yeah, but it was everything else was true. Actually, everything was true there. It was the summer, technically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> technically. Okay. So uh, um but you were, in a, you were at the silent retreat for, fourteen days. Fourteen days. Yeah. So which, so I'm less of an expert in silence meditation retreats than cast is in. Fasting, in terms mm -hmm. of days. But so know? in those fourteen days, yeah. you spoke nothing. Yeah, we just spoke to the coordinators. Okay. Or to the teacher once in a while. So the teacher, you have a 10 minute interview every day with uh, either of the teachers. Okay. Hmm. So uh, just to check in on your progress and you ask questions and they, they give uh, instructions. And, and, uh, but if you have technical questions to the people who are running the thing, then they're more than happy to answer them. So... I've heard other retreats, people are allowed to even look at their phones. They're not supposed to, but when oh, yeah, but somebody does it, it's easy for another person to do it. Yeah, it's... But this retreat, nobody did that. Not in... Uh, well, I check my phone maybe 20 minutes per day, actually, so it's kind of cheating. Uh, but I don't think it... It definitely didn't ruin the retreat for me. So I did check it in the end, you know, in, in my room. Did the retreat cure things. any of your diseases? Uh, probably my uh, I've heard that exposing yourself naked to people is a mental disease and oh. I haven't done that since so, so maybe so you've stopped exposing yourself saying it like that's making you sound like a creepy guy from the 80s in like a trench coat <laughs> I love it um, yeah no uh, let's see diseases me I mean I felt what very was your takeaway or what was your intention maybe yeah so I'm going on a silent retreat I picked up a um, Buddha kind of book, hardcore, last year, about Dharma and and the whole. They were, you know, swearing in the book by. It was very inspiring. Just it was about yeah, everybody can attain the things that they said they attained in the old text, in the Buddha sutras and you know the the great enlightenment, freedom from suffering. And, and that, this stuff is actually still available. Yeah, it's available if people uh, open themselves up to it. And uh, most people will probably happen to actually do some sacrifices and some practices, probably. I mean, it, it's more likely to happen if one has some kind of practice. So, uh, and and uh, in that book, they were like, yeah, go on a retreat. It's... It's better to go on a 10-day retreat to directly uh, meditate for 10 days straight than to meditate for an hour a day, which is, I think, twice as much. Yeah. No, it's, it's better to, to meditate for 180 hours straight than, than 180 a hours half hour a in day. Yeah, 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 yeah. year. So, uh, you I know, I felt that. the same. I, went, uh, I do yoga like once a week. Mm. It's very nice. And when I was there this Wednesday, I was like, could we just stay here for like, I don't know, at least the rest of the day? Why are we, we're just sort of getting into the thing yeah. and, and oh, then the session's over. See you later next week. It's interesting. It's, it's something to that. And you can do it at home. that is true. Yeah. But it's something fun about doing these things together. And I guess yeah. fasting feels sort of more like a, a, a solo thing, like a I feel pretty alone. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, everyone is sitting around eating dinner. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I have to make dinner for my kids. and Yeah. But I become a master chef when I'm fasting. Yeah, I do, it's the same thing. Yeah. I love cooking food when I'm fasting. And then I'm oh, really? asking people, uh, how does it taste? Yeah, that's cool, oh, right? Because really? you kind of uh, feel like you're tasting it when they're describing the yeah. taste. Yeah. 
and the smells and yeah. you know it's oh yeah that's pretty that's pretty and you know nice. i work at night so i mean i'm at oslo s in the morning and then i when i'm like a little bit out in the fast i can end up walking around just looking like window shopping food yeah. like Ooh. just looking at food Looking, <laughs> looking yeah. like a weirdo, you know, like looking at people <laughs> eating stuff. You just walk through. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, you know, that's how it is. I had this idea, and I think, like, to have a fast retreat, like where people come together and fast. And fast. Yeah, that would be very mm. nice. Uh, but they have them. They have them. Oh, it's, yes. Yeah, in, in America, there's a lot of them. God, the Americans, they think of everything. You know, and the thing they, the thing that that they do there, they don't, we don't, they don't drink like, like normal spring water, because uh, the best way to do the fasting, according to the specialists, is with uh, distilled water, so that you don't get any like the cl like pure just clean water, because then your body just gets time to. Uh, focus on getting rid of toxins and uh, healing itself yeah you just you know? leave, the, leave yeah. the system alone all you all you all you pretty much do is it just runs through you and you piss it out and oh, then wow. so the body gets time to do what it's supposed to do you know we're supposed it's to fast like like animals fast you know what i mean so yeah yeah, there is something weird about this uh, this constant eating thing we're on, yeah. which seems like, for one thing, at least I noticed, is your body seems to be built for periods of no food. Yeah. And and then we're just constantly just eating. It's very strange. It's not that strange because we're constantly hit with the images of food. We are. You know, it's everywhere on billboards and TV and the internet. Can't even watch uh, YouTube. There's a lot clip of food. without food mm. being pushed in your face. So, and it's <laughs> shitty food getting pushed in your face. Yeah, that's that's actually the coolest thing is that not only is it food, but it's the worst food. Yeah. Branded as the most soul feeding food because <laughs> you'll always connect these things to sort of like yeah. the really the real things like love and compassion. And it's like yeah. uh, I'm still like amazed like Coca Cola. It's a soft drink, but it's still. Uh, their whole brand is 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 built on sort of love, yeah. but what they're selling is death. Death. <laughs> it's absurdly funny. You know? um, Mats, how long have you been going without food? You had an apple earlier. Hmm. I think probably sixteen hours. Sixteen hours. Yeah. Mm. Maximum. That's. How long do you think you could go um, with some prep, prep time? W with some prep time, and I could also uh, I, I could also prepare myself. So 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 I could, for example, put it in a weekend where you know I don't have twenty projects going on. Oh yeah, that would be smart. Okay, uh, then psh, if, uh, weekend. A weekend. Uh, well, well, I guess theoretically last for the days if I was locked in a cage but then wouldn't be voluntarily it, that doesn't it, sound like a like a very <laughs> is that the thing with fasting does it have to be voluntary I don't know well how else like, unless, I, unless someone know, kidnaps you uh, yeah I think <laughs> you know um, I've, I've done plant medicine yeah and I've talked to people who've had the um, had psychotic break breakdowns yeah. and now I chose my spiritual experience they had their spiritual experience thrown upon them right and it was a nightmare and for me it was quite the opposite the, yeah. yeah and i think it's the same thing if you sort of like put people in prison and then take away their food uh, they'll, they'll freak out they'll just freak the fuck out but yeah. whereas sort of like or maybe you just accept it you know i don't know it's you, interesting. You, might, you might interesting Interesting. You might have to just accept it, so, you know, <laughs> accept your f destiny right there and then. Like, okay, I'm not getting food. Let me just, yeah, try and survive here. What's up with the number forty? Because it goes obviously, it's a, it's a biblical reference, and it's also a, a Buddhist one, is it? I think I, I would uh, mostly associate with Christianity. Because uh, Jesus Elijah, he goes into the desert for forty days and yeah. he doesn't eat. Yeah, and then he was and helped Moses. out with the angel, by the angel because he didn't eat or drink. No, he didn't. Yeah, he was yeah, tempted by the devil he had three a, times. He had like a dry fast for 40 God days. Damn. 
So, uh, <laughs> that's boss level fasting. Yeah, but we can't do that. We're not Jesus. So. We're not Jesus. So a yeah. dry fast is when you don't drink water. Either. Yeah. And I people don't think, do that. Yeah, they do that. But I don't think people time. do it longer. Like I, I've seen people go three max like seven days yeah. you have also heard like five or six or seven days like without. Max, yeah yes i think when i did my 40-day fast i went the last day without drinking yeah and i remember midday i was drunk like my body was i was <laughs> unable to sort of have a coherent uh, uh, conversation yeah and and uh, uh and by the time my fast was over i was semi-delirious uh, <laughs> But I, uh, 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 it was, uh, you know, Muslims during um, Ramadan. Ramadan, they yeah. will not drink or eat during between s sunup and sundown. Yeah. And I was like, what is that like not drinking? And it's that's actually pretty intense. Yeah, it is. Even though they, obviously they eat. But they break the fast. They break the fast. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and from what I can tell, it's a compromise. Yeah. Like. Originally, we did fasting, and I also read about old Christian traditions, like fasting was normal. Yeah. But then after a while, it was like, okay, you're fasting, but on Sundays, you can have, you a, can have a little oh, snack. Yeah. Uh, which was like, what's going on over here? Because it's like, you're, you're putting a very like, you're putting yourself really out there, and you're, you're, you're going out into the desert, like, mentally speaking and, yeah. and 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 then there's like oh this is rough oh but just eat a little and then you'll, you'll sort be of okay you'll yeah. be okay but that defies the whole purpose of the it exercise it kind of does it's like when you stop quit quitting smoking cigarettes and you have one cigarette yeah then you're not you're gonna smoke another one <laughs> you are smoking cigarettes again. yeah <laughs> i did that a few days ago so i messed up i quit uh, tobacco for a long time and then i was like at my friend's place I was like, ah, oh, just give me one cigarette. So, uh, what's harder, quitting food or quitting cigarettes? That's a good question. Because for 40 the, days. Because, because the thing is, when I do, like, when I get to my third day of fasting, I do not want nicotine. Yeah. My body rejects it. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so wow. fasting doesn't make you crave cigarettes. Yeah. No. At so, all. So, uh, the, I mean, you, you're tackling the main part of your craving in yeah. the fasting and then cigarettes is sort of you're tackling that problem within the fasting yeah because you you know you, you fasting fasting pretty much puts you back on zero you yeah. know what i mean it's, and uh, you, you kind of start over and your body's going to reject all these poisons when you once once you when you're cleansing right. you know you you can smoke it's, it's, but it's, it's not enjoyable right Put it like that yeah because yeah. you're also more sensitive yeah to and, and also like your body's cleansing so you don't want poison in you you know right. like you, it seems like a horrible time to add yeah it really is water. that's a good point you know yeah people should fast more often but how if the um if the medical field like my sister is a doctor and she also is like I don't think fasting is a good idea. Even like we, we talked about intermittent fasting, yeah. which I also think is interesting. Like, well, like not eating for a 16 hour period. Yeah. I've to been allow doing that your... for three years now. Yeah. Three and a half. And you look yeah. great, man. Yeah, yeah. it's that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think yeah, I didn't start. I, I, I'm, I look the same age as when I started with the you just haven't fasting. aged yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah but you definitely take off years when you fast yeah yeah you end up looking 10 years younger like in, in the amount of like like i'm a little bit big you know but uh the fir first time i fasted i dropped 40 kg that's a lot of that's a lot of kilos yeah. so one kilo a day one kilo a day yeah that is, yeah. Insane. Yeah. That is about the most you can probably it's possible to so i was i was weighing 105 i went down to 65 kg God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. wow wow you uh, you you I think I have pictures. Half and i have a picture before and after there's a before after picture yeah, yeah. that seems like the perfect time to have a before yeah. after picture let me see if i can find it wow. i can just you can just talk amongst yourself i can find it so you're intermittent fasting 
Yeah. But have you been fasting like for longer periods of time other than these Just three hours? days. Three okay. days. And I think I also cheated with a couple of juices in oh, those Oh yes. Three the days. Juices. And maybe that ruined everything. And I was also in Rio de Janeiro and there were restaurants and smelling great Brazilian food everywhere. And I was traveling, so a lot of stimuli and I was really tempted and I just... I don't, yeah, I did it. Here's the before picture. Yes. Here's no. the after picture. Maybe we should uh, show, show the camera. camera. Show to camera. He will show it to the camera. That's, yeah, that's quite the transformation. Damn. This, oh shit. This way, yeah. This is the before picture. You can see my arms are pretty big and chest and I look depressed. And then... the weights. Then this is the after picture, 40 kg slider. Whoa! So, during the fast, were you exercising? I was doing yoga and uh, stretching. Yeah, and, and you weren't doing weights. No, 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 no. Because I was trying to, to do some uh, uh, remodeling in the house while fasting. Yeah. And I was like, I was standing for five minutes and I was like, this is virtually impossible because there is no, none of that energy. Is I, think, I, I think that's from person to person because I get very energized. It's like when I come to probably around day, the last days from day 33 to 40, it's tough. Yeah. The countdown is tough. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess Up there's something psychologically because you're sort of also knowing that it comes to a close. But it, at the same time, it, I see your point. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of stuff <laughs> happening inside you yeah. that we don't know, even know what's going on. Yeah. Like I remember I had this feeling uh, from my belly button mm. and up to here. It was like a tingling feeling mm. that goes all the way up here. It was it's like it like somebody somebody was tickling me wow. you know inside what it was I, can, I don't know what it is but uh, and also um, I used to have a heavy migraine and that pretty much uh, was fixed oh uh, yeah. and didn't come That's back afterwards. no no I'm good oh. I'm good now yeah, I guess because you you do cleanse your body properly like I, I believe it's a regenerative uh, yeah, the, the, the body pretty much uh, fixes the damages yeah. because it gets time to do that. It doesn't get time to do that when we're eating all the no, time. No, because it, all it has so to do is uh, digest. Yeah. yeah, and also crave because when we start eating, it starts craving and also spending energy on craving, right? Exactly. That's it's a vicious yeah. circle. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I like to have music in this show. Uh, I'm going to play a song. All right. What was the song I was going to play? I completely forgotten, but that's... Yes! Yes, 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 yes. Um, there were two songs. I'm going to play both of them, which... Do you want to have a gna Gnarls? Gnarls Barkley? Gnarls Barkley. Gnarls? Gnarls? Yeah, he used to be... Gnarls Barkley? He used to be in a group called the Booty Mob. Uh -huh. Or Air. Look at Nars Barkley. With two Nars? I like that song. Nice too. It's nice, right? Yeah. Well, let's see. Because I think, you know, I don't have a studio band yet, but eventually, just, it's, uh, you know, the snowball effects. Yeah, yeah. You just gotta you start, know. you just gotta, gotta start, start some shit, and then it just happens. Organically. You know? Okay. God, my balls, like, how the fuck does this, <laughs> it's, a, it's a mess, but look, when you sit like this with a guitar, guitar, you look like a, like, god damn it. Maybe, uh, I should get like a stand or something, I'll get it, it eventually. Put it in here. Do you think that works? Yeah. Oh, it's in the far, you That's know? okay, I'll put, Is it dangerous I'll, I'll put my foot you in. Go, do you put your foot down? Yeah. Okay. It's protected very well. And that's, that's, how was I, that's how I learned to play guitar too, but uh... Do you, do, you, do you play the guitar? I used to when I was younger. I played in a heavy metal band at some point. Oh! Uh, we were the Maiden Maniacs. <laughs> now I'm so... It's too, f it's too far away from me. I'm sorry. Oh. I'll put it like this. Now I'm... So, uh, you, have you noticed that when you play guitar by yourself, it's all good, but the moment there's people around... You fuck up. You fuck up, what's up with that? <laughs> yeah. And that's the reason why I'm playing the guitar here, because from what I can tell, uh, you just have to do it more. It's the nerves, you know? It's nerves. Yeah. Yes, but why am I nervous? I am among friends. 
That just doesn't feel right. It's still pressure, you know. Are you are you waiting for me to fail? No. I'm uh, meditating for you to fail. <laughs> <laughs> You're meditating on my failure. I th thank you for that. It's because I tried to play an E, but it was an A minor. Minor mistake. Man. Are you are you great at playing? Will you play guitar afterwards? No, no, I quit that stuff long time ago. I just started. You to talk about the guitar as if it was drugs, man. Come on, is that bad? <laughs> Should I stop now before it gets like before, before you become a rock star? <laughs> before before stardom. Yeah. I, I remember, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. There was something so pleasant about that place. Even your emotions had an echo and so much space. And when you were out there without care, yeah, I was out of touch. But it wasn't because I didn't know. Damn it! This F. What's who made F? I just knew too much. Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Possibly. And I hope that you are having the time of your life. Yeah, yeah, you think yeah. twice. That's my only advice. Come on now, who do you, who do you, who do you, who do you think you are? Ha ha ha! Bless your soul. Think you really think you're in control? Well, I think you're crazy. I think you're crazy. Crazy. I think you're crazy. <laughs> Just like me. Chuck. <laughs> Chuck. There's another verse, but I, I think I, I love this. I love this song. It's a very nice song. I didn't become aware of the lyrics until now. Right? Well, he has a lot of uh, good music. Especially, I like his uh, early 90s uh, hip hop when he was more rapping. You know. Yeah. With his old group. Because you know, when I say I'm gonna, uh, when I'm gonna, I'm gonna fast and I'm gonna uh, be quiet for seven days, people are like, you're crazy, man. No, I think you're the most sane person. But that's that's what that's what also like uh, surprises me is like the crazy thing is insisting on stuffing your face. Yeah. And being uh, controlled by your cravings. Yeah. Mm. You need to have some self-control. You know? Yeah, transcending that shit is that's actually kind of um, that's kind of even my doc sanity even my doctor told me you know uh, we don't really recommend fasting but. Personally, I think what you're doing is great, and if you fast 40 days, it's good for you. That my yeah. doctor said it, but he cannot say that officially, you know. Yeah, and obviously, yeah. if you started fasting when you were 60 kilos... No, 105. Yeah, but if oh, you... Yeah, 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 okay, I understand, sorry. Yeah, you wouldn't have a lot, a lot of, of body fat to sort of... Uh, um, but I guess... But you can I've still heard go. about people fasting for like... Ever, literally, like even going for a really long time. Yeah, you can still go like 10, 20 days, even though you're skinny. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't have to go 40. I'm just extreme. Yes. Uh, that's how, just how I am. I'm, how I'm built, you know. Yeah, I, you I, I, I always push the limits. Yeah. So. But that's what you know, astronauts and space explorers and, and um, daredevils, they have to push the limits. If not, yeah. we're not getting anywhere. Then we're just going to be stuck in the basement forever, never going to San Francisco, where this show is headed. Yeah. 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 You know? yeah. Um, I was, um, we should, uh, I've made some, um, more clips. Maybe we can watch the one where, um, um, because earlier today I had my last meal, uh, because I'm not going to eat in seven days. 
and mm. I had my wife film it. Um, it it's the one who's uh, fasting. That's a clip, right? Run, run, run clip. Pew. First record on the camera. Yes, yes. This is Thursday, the 29th of October. And this will be my last meal before going into the quiet fast. And I've prepared a sign. Wait. A silent fast for peace. So I will have the cereal with the raspberries and cacao because those are my favorite things in the world. I'm gonna have some almond. Almond. Yeah. It's not funny? I don't like it anymore, too. Oh, no. Okay. So it's now. Time is it 7 o'clock? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Are you sure you want that to be our last meal? And not eating it's for really a week? It's good. Mm. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, what would you choose as your last meal? Would it be this? Hell no, I don't know. Would it be pizza quattro formaggi? Yeah, I don't know. I think if it were to be my last meal, it would be red currants with some um, uh, vanilla cream on top. Mm. We didn't know cream or sauce. Yes, yeah, so go so, get see. it. Well, the birds ate all the red currants also, this summer. Go to the store. We don't sell it at the store. What? It's only you have to pick it in your own garden. Oh, okay. The world becomes a better place by doing nothing. Will it work? Time will tell. Yeah, so it's a, it's a silent fast for peace. Um, and so uh, uh, around seven o'clock I had my last meal, which was like this cereal. It's like cacao and, and, uh, and, uh, and um, raspberries. It's great. I usually, I usually eat my last meal before midnight. Yeah, when, just when before fast, midnight. When right? I fast, yeah. So yeah. That, that's just my, my rule. That's how it's I, a good rule. Yeah. So it's, uh, I had some uh, um, food with the family and I was yeah. like, okay, so this is, I guess this is the last meal. And I think the, the silent part, that starts when this show ends. Right. So the moment we cut, then I'll be silent for a really? week. So you'll be so, sal so, silent, so, Bob. So I can't ask you yeah. about the second awakening? Yeah, but the show is not over yet. You. We can go for how long can we go for? Because yeah, I need to catch the last train from yes, Oslo we to Kolbotten. Yes, yes. I think we, it leaves a little bit before one o'clock. So okay, uh, it will be good. Yeah. Yes, we don't have to stop, but maybe Just, Mats yeah. has to go. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I have to go and catch some uh, sleep at uh, not too much over eleven. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. We'll I, keep have it. I have toddlers. Now it's like uh, 10 to 11, but if we can go a little over, if that's okay. fine with you guys, because you know, it was really, this is really enjoyable. It is. It is a, um, it's a good carnival. And, and I think tomorrow, if, uh, if I feel up for it, I'll go to the center of the dream and I'll sit there for a while with my sign. Because obviously, I picked this week because in America's. We're sort of there is something about America. I don't know what, but it seems to be very like present in our uh, in our uh, in our consciousness currently. Yeah. There's this insane election between two clowns and a teddy bear, yeah. and uh, uh, I thought, what I can do is just not give it any attention at all. It's the best thing you could do. I can just say, I'll just be over here, staying present with myself, mm. and then. Hopefully, 
do whatever happens, happens. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> praying that <laughs> yeah yeah this is about the most peaceful slogan i've ever seen it's it's it's, it's pretty... silence fasting and peace and peace that's pretty good uh, right it's pretty yeah. much peace yeah the, the most peace you can be I think maybe on Saturday I'll go into Oslo and then I'll sit there for a while. Yeah. Let's see how this works. Put a hat in front of you and see what happens. Oh my god, I can... Or maybe the... Maybe I can do like this. <laughs> you can support peace by becoming a patron. Maybe that's, whips. That's pretty clever. Here, yeah, or whips. Yeah. 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 Okay, 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 okay. Um, The second, what's the second awakening? Yeah, I think uh, Eystein, he posted an uh, Instagram post and he talked about you having a second oh, awakening. Yes. And, well, you uh, know, I've been, uh, um, we don't know each other that well, but no. back in 2015, I believe, I had what we could call sort of like a non-dual experience. Mm. Uh, and it was quite, um, uh, I was taken a bit uh, uh, aback because I wasn't prepared at all. Yeah. Because I thought the world was very much just physical and uh, my existence was limited to birth and death. and That's it. That's it. And I was so uh, sure. Yeah. I was dead sure. And then it fell apart. I was like, I don't know anything about this. And, uh, and I think, uh, uh, well, after that, uh, I went with my friend Eystein, who I've been doing this show and the podcast with for years. We went uh, the, uh, on an Ayahuasca retreat. And uh, um, that was pretty intense. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, have you been? Yeah. yeah, I did an episode with you on my yes, story. You did. Yes, yeah. you did. It was about the same time. This is, uh, you did. did you know anything about this? Uh, no. I was. No, I don't know. No, it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but it's uh, it was a very um, uh, intense thing. And then it sort of set things in motion, and uh, and uh, uh, I was back. Uh, I was back uh, a second time last year, in 2018, where I sort of felt like I came home, which was very good. Mm. It was great. Like I landed, uh, and uh, uh, I've been once since. But then I was just dancing with joy because I am. I am home. Yeah. So there is just the, that part of the journey is over now I can start doing what I came here to do and that is sort of like realizing that I am actually to do this show yeah. and I am mm. to actually just be me and yeah that's it and just uh, and enjoy the fabulous blessings, blessings that surround you yeah, yeah. The, the best thing you can do for the world is to be yourself fully, yes right? yes yeah. exactly yeah. Uh, and I and love the mustache, by the way. I, yeah, I'm. Uh, I like the jacket. And, and yeah, this all jacket that, and the thing. mustache is actually a result of uh, Gotas Parlament, who I made a lot of music videos for back in the day. Okay. Um, we did a music video like uh, uh, a year or two ago, and I made a music video just so I could dance in the music video. Okay. Uh, and I was a police officer, so I had a mustache and I had this jacket. And when I realized that I want to become like a talk show host, like a proper talk show host, because me and Robert, we were doing like uh, podcasts and kept it very like spiritual. Yeah. And I was like, I want to be, I want to just do this for real. I just want to go, I just want to go at it. And, and, uh, uh, and Robert, he, uh, we sort of part, parted ways as, as the f best friends we could ever be, uh, because finally we sort of didn't have to do something together that was only my passion or his passion too. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you, you join forces. I don't know how maybe you felt that way with your band. Like, yeah. it feels right at the time, but then there's the time for, 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 for moving on. Growth. And, yeah, growth. Yeah. For a reason, for a season. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's a bit scary at times because now I'm sort of like just running the ship all by myself. But then... It is just me. Like like you have all the experience from back in the <laughs> days that you gathered with you. So no, you know how to do it, you know. Yeah. So it's like, uh, you do like this. Yeah. And it's going well. Uh, I think you're doing so. well. You know, yeah. I couldn't agree more because this is this is the only thing I want to be doing is this. And we're doing it. So yeah. what, it it's, doesn't have to happen. It's already happening. It is yeah. happening right now. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it is. 
I I love the character. I didn't. I you are you, but I love that character. You know. Yes. You obviously, th this on the is screen hair and uh, is and a doing shows. Original, very natural. Yeah. I think yeah. this is one of a kind. Yeah. I laugh a lot when I just watch you. It's a very original setting. I yes. Know, I, say, you know. yeah. I like this place. Yeah. I think we've made like a good place down it's here. It's a good energy here. It is, right? Yeah. It's baked in the oven of love yeah. on the 230 degrees. I feel it. Since you're going to be silent uh, now and I haven't talked to you for six months or actually kind of a year. Is it a year? S I met you at 17th <laughs> of May, our national anthem day, I mean, Independence Day. Independence but we didn't talk that much, but we went to Trondheim together for three days or four days. Yes, and we talked we to had... Rob Bell. So I was wondering, have you reached out to Rob Bell? Yes. Oh, you have? You see, when I started the podcast, there was this American pastor named Rob Bell. Yeah. A wonderful guy who really inspired me because when I was back in my box, I hated religion for, for what it was worth. Like... Uh, I remember like Kalpa Diem, I made some music videos for them yeah. and uh, 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 Megdi was asked, saying like, I want to make a music video where all religions sort of melt into one. And I was like, fuck you man, I'm not going to touch that shit, that, I don't want to be a part of this, yeah. this hoax. And then uh, looking back, I'm like, I was so afraid, you know, it was scary. But it's a popular thing to hate it on is. spirituality. It is. I think that's what they want us to do. They don't want us to feel the compassion and the love and, yeah. uh, and, and get the understanding that uh, God can provide, you know. Yeah, but they because want then you are reliant on the manufacturing. Uh, yeah, and then the government is your God, you know. Yeah. And, and you remain a slave. And it's like when you find God, I believe you find freedom also. Yeah, there is, there is true liberation. And I have to say, I feel exactly that way. Yeah. Uh, and Rob Bell was very instrumental to that because he talked about religion in a totally different way. Yeah. And he talked about like the Bible and the scriptures, looking at them from a totally different pr perspective and yeah. found like empathy and love in the fabric of the whole thing. And it was the perfect timing because I was sort of waking up from my box. Yeah. Uh, and so one of my goals when I started my podcast, my infinite podcast together with Robert was to have Robert as a guest. Mm. And then as it turned out last summer, he was going to the Olaf's Fest in, in Trondheim. Okay. As I said, we have to go, we have to talk to him. And I reached out to the festival and they sort of put me in connection with Rob. And he is obviously because like he is a genuinely beautiful, um, caring person. Yeah. Uh, we had the most wonderful chat with him. Uh, and a podcast. Uh, like a, as a podcast episode. And uh, it was uh, it was pretty it was pretty amazingly great fun because I think that was was my goal. So you you learned something from uh, that experience. Yes, uh, you can actually do what you want to do, and also um, limitations are primarily what you put upon yourself. Yeah. Um, like there was uh, this really interesting episode. So we met him the first day we came to Trondheim, and we were just sitting out, hanging out like old friends, and then the next day I think he had some Q and A or something, and I f got sort of like. Well, he doesn't want to talk to me because I'm just this random person. So I didn't go and talk to him. And it was so interesting how sort of I made this separation like, no, no, he's, he's this guy and I'm yeah. this guy, so yeah. we can't. Well, he didn't see it that way. No, he didn't he see that way at mind. all. And then like when I finally sort of conquered that fear and I, gave, when I, and I went and talked to him and it was like we were hugging and it was friends. Uh, and... and uh, that's that's the that's the power of the confronting fear exactly. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. reals. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, back to your question, when I started the the um, like when I was okay, so I'm gonna become the next Letterman. So I'm gonna transcend Letterman because I'm I'm the wolf or the wolf. <laughs> Oh, the um, thunder, bring the thunder, or something yeah. like that. Oh, so um, you're, you're made for this. I'm made for Your this. I, I came, I came for, this. for this. I was yeah. born for this. Uh, and I sent a, sent an email to, to Rob, and I was like, uh, I'm doing a talk show now, and I want you to be my guest. And he just writes back, I will be your guest. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that's that's what it's because. Did Rob Bell say this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, again? Now? For this? Yeah. Ah. Do you have any UFO episodes? Not, did, did we, do you have, 
Then you have to come back or do you uh, have any UFO episodes? Yeah. God damn it. But oh. you know, uh, I was I was just talking to him about it. I, I was cuz I was offered to do like a podcast at my friend's job because they have like a studio. Oh. So I was thinking like uh, it would be cool to like invite Yannick, you know. Yeah. So let's have a sit down and then he told me, "Oh, well, his stepsister is best friends with Yannick." Yeah. Wow. So it, it could because be cool. Because she wrote like a book and everything on the UFO experience, right? Yeah, and they kind of humiliated her. Yeah, I made fun of her. I read out loud from that book. That was back in my science yeah, yeah, day, you know, yeah. because that was what we did. Out of fear. Yeah. But the whole country ridiculed her and yeah, she, she really she went on like a, a... She hit the wall, yeah. became Jay Diva. And yeah, she became Jay Diva. God damn, that's a lot of story here. But that's I honestly, I I don't think she, like, why would she hold on to a lie for that long? She hasn't benefited from that story oh. in her life. So I, you know, I would love to sit down and have a chat with her. Yeah. And like, we need to, like, tell your story. And especially now, because there's a lot of stuff coming out about, uh, you know, extraterrestrial uh, vehicles being found by uh, kept uh, by the yeah all of a Pentagon. sudden it's more real right? yeah now it's, it's now not it's, it's, it's in mainstream media it's probably yeah. they have an agenda of mm. their own but <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's, it's 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 coming out they're gonna eventually tell us the truth and i think it's soon you know so but i would love to sit here with yannick yannick and have a talk yeah, I challenge accepted. Yeah. We should have a have a Yannick a UFO episode. Yeah. Mm. For real, so yeah, that would yeah. be great. Yeah. I can tell my experience too. So. Do you oh. have a li do you, do you want to give a little uh, uh this uh, just back in 1998. <laughs> you want to put the camera on me? <laughs> yeah, in 1998. Uh people of course are going to say I'm crazy, but I'm not. Uh, <laughs> uh, me and my friends, we were outside uh, my friend's building, and then we see a light like that, the uh, light bulb, bright like that, far, far away, and then it started, it was floating, like it wasn't flying, it was just floating, oh. like, uh, like it was in water, you know? It came closer and closer, and before I knew it, it was over our heads, about 200 meters wide. Let's say, f let's say 50 meters thick, bright lights under it, no sound, uh, and just kind of said he hello. And then it stood there, and then it went over the woods, and then it... And that, was, that was the last we saw of it. <laughs> so, uh, 200 meters? Wide. It, yeah, wide? Like, yeah, like... Yeah. Uh, above your head? Like head? 50 meters above my head. Wow. Maybe 50, 100 meters above Just you and your me friends? And, me and uh, one, my, one of my friends. And, it was and two, they, two and they agreed, obviously? This yeah, is what I we're see. seeing. We were like, yeah, okay, now we know. Yeah. <laughs> now, now we know. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. That's pretty So amazing. now we know. And then we, then we met some people. Hey, we just saw UFO. They were like, they were like UFO? What are you guys on? I'm like, I don't know. I never took anything that made me see solid machines 200 meter wide no. you know but so. you know that's that's uh, uh my favorite favorite thing in the world is uh, is is uh, is this guy uh joseph campbell who wrote uh, uh, about heroes mythology okay and uh, uh, his point being that all stories that humanity has has created ever since the beginning of whatever is constructed around this mythology of the hero's journey okay now, the hero's journey always starts with the hero leaving the village. And leaving the village is something you have to do alone. Yeah. And that's what's so cool about like a UFO experience or any experience. So it's like saying when you're fasting or when you're being uh, in silent meditation for a really long period of time, you have these experiences and then you go out and share them with your fellow villagers and they're just looking at you like, what the fuck are you on? Yeah. And that's like the cool part is then trusting your experience yeah. and actually being like that's that's cool that's cool yannick was very brave though yeah, back, especially back in those days and I, I, like you know i used to my favorite person is the princess the norwegian princess because yeah. i used to be so angry with like well she's obviously full of shit because she's talking to horses and 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 she's just she's just saying these really like outrageous outrageous things but why on earth would she? Yeah. And, and, and when you start to sort of like, let it like settle in a bit and you're like, can you allow this to be your experience? Can you actually trust that this is a real yeah. experience? I think this is like, what she's into, I think it's like kind of like white magic. 
Yeah. And well, she's together with like a shaman. You know? She is for that. Stuff. And and uh, you know, I'm pretty, pretty. I'm pretty sure that guy is into a little bit of dark voodoo and stuff like that. I would think so. <laughs> Interesting. I have invited them on the show. They yeah. they uh, uh, could they make responded? it, but uh, oh, they responded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are f fairly polite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in time, in time, it's like Mario. No, he he'll get the princess eventually. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's crazy. We show. have a shaman in the Kongehus, you know, in the king's castle now. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's pretty neat. Is it? Oh, you're skeptical to this shaman? Uh. Yeah, I think there's some funny, funny, bit funny story behind this stuff. Yeah, it must be. You know, but it's know. it's. Uh, I don't have anything against him personally. No, I just no, think no. it's a little bit, a uh, little bit crazy, you know. But uh, there is. Um, I'm. Uh, uh, people are looking at the. Actually, I was looking at the watch. Sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you had UFO, UFO store, and I think like uh, yes, I was so into UFOs. You know, like the X Files. Yeah, I, I love that X-Files. stuff. Yeah, and yeah. I watched. I rewatched an episode of the X Files, and I was like, it's just like, do you believe in magic or do you believe in science? Which which life would you choose? Yeah. And I love that shit. It's Have you like, seen Taken? No, I haven't. See, go on YouTube and type Taken. Uh, by I think it's Steven Spielberg. It's like because uh, you, know, you know he has inside info. So these are like stories from uh, yeah. from America from way back in the 60s up until early 2000s, from the Roswell everything and all in between and everything that's happened and it's like the government cover-ups and the army and uh, yeah. then you have the the, uh, the hybrids mixed humans mixed with uh, alien and they come to collect them and it's it's an incredible. Uh, it's, but isn't it amazing that the world is anything can happen and anything is possible because that, yeah. that's what I like about this. And see, like, pro see Project Blue Book also. Now I have to start writing stuff down. Project Blue Book and Taken. Taken. Steven, no, Steven, Steven, that one is, that one is um, the Taken is Steven Spielberg so you have to because there's another Taken which is uh, that. I will write Spielberg. Yeah. I like Spielberg. I like. Uh, I watched. Uh, I, I watched uh, Close Encounters. Yeah, it's, it's pretty great. It is. It's an amazing movie. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I liked. I never thought about this, but when I watched it the last time, I was like, you know, in the end, he leaves with the spaceship. Yeah. And then it's like, but what about his family? And then I had this <laughs> feeling like, but. What if the spaceship is picking him up to his family? Like, why do we k insist on like this reality being? Like the core reality, you know. Like, what if we're just here on vacation and like? And who knows? Those people might be our family too. Did you right? Yeah, and I really so. and then, then people, I was like, aliens. this is so this is so beautiful because is. Spielberg is daring to sort of uh, explore uh, outside of the. When you watch Project Blue Book, it also has uh, a little uh, segment from e making of the ET because it, uh, it's all about these two agents that are trying to cover up. UFOs, yeah. yeah, and one of them was uh, consulted by Steel Spielberg uh, f oh. on the movie after he uh, finished Project Blue Book because Project Blue Book is like a cover-up organization of oh. the FBI, so all the UFO um, incidents that happen, they're there to kind of debunk it. Interesting. Yeah. So I'll I'll look into this. We'll have Yannick on because you have a connection. And this, and you will be back on the show, yeah. And we'll speak some more. Definitely. God damn it, that's great. <laughs> nice. Um, so you have a lot of things to watch now in your silence. These are very good series. Yeah, you're gonna, not, you want to enjoy yourself. I will here. not. You're, I will not be watching entertainment okay, okay. during silence. I will be. I will do as little as humanly yeah, possible. Yeah. Hum. Yeah. Because I'm gonna be with the Ulf, yeah. and then yeah. we're gonna get like real. Yeah. We're gonna be here. And we're gonna be like present, yeah. and uh, it's gonna be a fabulous journey. Yeah. Looking yeah. forward to this. It's good stuff. The, um, the self is where it is. Yeah. Yeah. The most deep part of yourself. If you can stay with that part. This brings me to to a segment of the yeah. show, which is the called the quote segment. Now every episode of the Wake Up Show, I've been doing this season one and season two. I found a quote on the internet that I think is relevant to, to sort of what we're talking about in the episode. 
and uh, I will obviously did this today as well as this is a day like any other uh, of the show and uh, uh, I've searched into that and put I used this this uh, Apple device because um, they can do that now and uh, um, would you guys maybe you want to read the quote sure and you can like look into the camera you want to cut to to this camera and you guys, you should we, read it together or something read, like. I'll take the first few seconds. And with one. passion or something. Every other word. Yeah. If you want to make the world a better place, place. take a look at yourself and make that. No, uh, uh, and make a change. Change. Yeah. Michael Jackson. That's Michael Jackson. Yeah. Michael Jackson. Do you always have that quote? Because I've seen an episode quote with every episode. He was an alien. In yeah. Men, in Men he in was Black. a high conscious. In Men in Black, he was an alien. Dude. Actually. Yeah, that's true. He's in that film even. That's very tongue in cheek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, like we talked about, like the fasting and the silence, it is going inwards and it's being with yourself and it's actually working on you yeah. and then you can go out and change the world but then you know when you fast you can you can also get on people's nerves <laughs> yes that's true because and, you become and because people get on your nerves like you you'll snap for the little oh, shit yeah. you know somebody bumps you <gasps> like, huh? oh i can feel it now <laughs> <laughs> so you have to have self-control like you have to like hold your like hold your horses like yeah. you know like calm down you know everything's okay don't be so sensitive and so <sighs> <laughs> any words of advice other than that obviously that was words of advice yeah do you have any silence advice be with yourself that's a good idea be the, with ulf and the the self behind the ulf go to the deepest place where you are and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and you know uh, he has a name he's uh, his superhero name is mr unfuckable unfuckable uh, unfuckable unfuckable okay <laughs> it's a word to look it up uh, uh, maybe i don't know uh, it's uh, a word uh, now uh, at least it? uh, well it's Unfuck a good it's a couple unfuck right? a couple <laughs> unfuck a couple <laughs> it's a good word i'm gonna use that yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a solid word it works Un uh and um my God, it's we should be. Uh, this show is way too short. We should we should start early. Extended. I don't know. Yeah, yeah go next. Joe Rogan. We just could go a part two. Hours. We should just go a part two. But I like the UFO. I like this UFO thing. That's yeah, I love this. He has to hook up with Yannick. Yeah. yeah, you know. And I know another lady who has like this uh, uh, farm where she uh, she brings people and they, and she they, she pretty much makes UFOs. And orbs appear. Damn! I, we should go to the farm. Uh, let me just give you her contact also. Yes. She's very interesting. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, is there anything you feel like we have left out on this? Is there anything you want to sell and pitch? You you made a music video. Uh, uh, no, you did. Uh, you made a song. Yeah, I made a song uh, with my friend uh, Nulis. Yeah. Uh, it was me, Northern Lights from Norge. Uh, we just put it out today. It's on YouTube. Uh, if you we'll put the YouTube the link the on the on the wake up, and and people can see it there. It's in Norwegian, it's but it's a, we're pretty much trying to sell Norwegian. Uh, yeah, it's very nature. nice and uh, picturesque. Yeah. yeah, it's just uh, trying to put uh, put out some positive energy. Yeah, yeah. nice. I like that. Yeah. How about we'll you, sorry? Has you got anything to add to this uh, fine uh, fine? Uh, I, I think silence is the best teaching. <laughs> just <laughs> silent. Silence is the best teaching, and I guess with that I should I always merge with, end the with a song, and uh, uh, obviously I want to say just thank you for for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. This it's was fun. Fucking lovely. Thank and, you. Uh, uh, yeah. From the bottom of my heart, which is bottomless, by the way. Yeah. I love you. Love you too, bro. And I love you. I love I you love guys. You. It's so great that we can actually make this space. And no. thank you so very much for for coming to the basement. Bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you, Everyone. man. That, that's Jamie. <laughs> He's Joe, Joe Rogan. fallen asleep over there. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, I'm going to end with the air song, because that was the, that was the second option, right? I like this song, and I think it's perfect for what I'm going into. So uh, once I finish the song, this is interesting. This is like I will uh, uh, speak no more for a week.
Or wait until we leave. Matt wants to say. Do you want to play one of your last videos first? The no. silence video? What? The silence video. No, that's okay. We can just put it out on... Um, we'll just put it out because that's just... Uh, you know, it, I didn't go out into the streets. Just an actor talking more about uh, uh, silence. But we'll... we'll uh, but thank you for reminding me. Um, because uh, I, I, make, I have to make sure that you guys get to where you need to go. And uh, um, I will play the song now. Yeah. Yeah? Thank you, guys. And to my wonderful viewers and listeners and... Uh, no viewers. It's a talk show. It's not a podcast. It's a talk show. I'm fooling myself. And to my patrons, thank you. I love you guys and I love everyone unconditionally. No strings attached. Bottomless heart. All of that stuff. Song. To be played. Let's do this. Let's do this. Man. <laughs> Shut up. It's, it's work in progress. I love the tie on the iPad. Tie pad? Tie pad. <laughs> <laughs> What song is this? You will get there. Okay. But now you're three, right? It's cool, right? <laughs> All I need is time to get behind this sun, get behind this sun and cast my way. All I need is a piece of this mind and then I can celebrate. All in all, okay. there's something to give. All in all, there's something to do. All in all, there's something to live with you. That's the end of the show, and that's the end of me talking for a week. God damn it, that's absurd. What, what's yeah. going to be your last word? What's going to be your last word? I love you. We love you. We love you.